Yes, like <laughs> one minute I like, one minute I'm like, oh, I love you. I was like, shove it up your ass. <laughs> Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny Murphy. And I'm Evan Real. And happy 150th episode to us. Yes, we made it to 150. And you made it to New York. I made it to New York City. Yeah, I'm officially here in New York City, guys, so I can be in studio with Danny all the time and with your favorite Bravo celebrities and reality stars. It's very exciting. It feels so good to be here instead of on that Zoom screen. I know, it was very Wizard of Oz, and it was very it was very funny for me watching Bravo celebrities try to work the earpiece. <sighs> yeah, I always wondered how they handled that. Like the fact that Countess Luann actually put in an earpiece to mm. listen to, like the fact that she dealt with that. Like I feel so honored and blessed that. The Countess would do such a favor for a little old me. Oh. But now she doesn't have to do that. No, no, she can live her best life with us. And one of the this was a perfect week for you to move here because it's been such a busy week here. Yeah. Uh, right after well, I mean, I love that you are missing New Jersey housewives so much that you moved to be closer to it because you kinda of moved right when the finale happened. Yeah, I mean, basically, I timed it uh, pretty perfect. Should have been to Rails. <laughs> yeah. I know. I still need to make it to Rails. Uh, but speaking of Rails, at that finale, I I feel like there's a, there's a lot to unpack, and I think the first thought that I had was that it wasn't as explosive as I as it was teased mm-hmm. to be. What did you think? Were I you... know. It very reminds me of that song. Do you know Peggy Lee? No. Who's Peggy Lee? Peggy is she Lee. a Jersey housewife? No, no. She could be. Could be. <laughs> she does this song, Is That All There Is? And like she's like, is that all there is to a fire? And like, because she's just watching the fire burn, she's like, is that all there is? And that's kind of what I felt with Jersey. I'm like, and I don't know if it was like because we knew this was the end for so many reasons and everything like that where I'm kind of like we maybe we were all expecting it to be more like it because there was explosiveness to it but I was like expecting like I don't know like more fireworks because it kind of was such a finale yeah so I mean the 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 fact that Jersey has to end Mm -hmm. as it is for whatever this finale like everyone was like that's the reason we're not having a reunion like it's going to make sense to the fans once you see it it didn't it didn't really make sense to me I didn't feel like there was much closure at all it didn't make sense to me because the ladies, I think, could be in the same room together because they all just sat and got up right after. It wasn't like everyone had to be restrained besides Danielle and Jen, but they like worked through that kind of quickly. Well, and that's the thing, too. We saw in the original teaser for the finale that there was like glass all over the floor and sweeping of all the dishware that was apparently or seemingly strewn about the room. But then it was, I think the only time glassware was ever thrown was when Jennifer Aiden accused Nate Cabral of having man boobs. By the way, that was so mean and if you saw the naked bra photo shoot that uh oh danielle cabral put up recently bringing the big guns out make the sweat girl oh that looks good what I, whether they're man boobs or wh- whatever is happening naked bra looks good we so investigated yeah. we, uh, and congratulations to the whole whole family with that because yeah seriously i know they are such a and not family. congratulations to jennifer aiden because i feel like she why she always goes to body shaming and i don't yeah, I just feel like it's very not to 2024. No, her. she needs to unpack that somewhere. I don't know where, but there's something going on with that. Which yeah. Isn't a, it is not a good look. No. Not a good vibe to do. And I feel, um, I, I, I don't know if we got all of his takes on her per se, but Ben from Watch What Crappens, we're so glad that he stopped by to talk to us a little bit about the Jersey finale and so much more. So stay tuned for the entire interview because... He, of course, is a Bravo expert. But here's what he had to say about the Jersey wrap-up. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think the thing that everyone has been talking about, I think you already know what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Like, New Jersey finale, mm-hmm. Last Supper. How do we feel about it? I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was it was weird because I I feel like I've never seen a season finale that was had so much finality to yeah. it. Yeah. You know, like, it seemed like they all walked in knowing that this might be their last time shooting it. Like, I don't know if the producers gave them a pep talk, like, you know, you guys are all in trouble and none of you may come back. But mm. there was some element that they walked in knowing, like, this was it. We're not doing a finale party. We're not, like, there's not, like, the, the, the place burned down. We're not doing a we're not doing a vacation at another time. Like, this is basically it, our last hurrah at Rails. So you sensed some finality, but also them sort of maybe trying to fight for their lives for whatever the next season would be? Like, who do you think was putting in the most work to... Possibly well, keep her spot. I mean, it's like it's not like they were fighting for their lives because they were just like fighting like usual. Like, yeah. They always fight, and it's not like they're like they're all like shrinking violets, and then they decided, you know what? Now I'm gonna like come hard. They like they've been doing this all season. Melissa, if anyone, was actually more on the like restrained side. Yeah, right? yeah she was a little calm. She yeah. had like a moment where she's like, "I'm a whore. I'm a whore." <laughs> and That's she did her pose. Mom, you just yeah. called a whore. <laughs> yeah. but, like, were we a fan of that? It's the way I. 
Well, I mean, I thought it was funny. I, I really enjoy Melissa not giving, and am I really allowed to curse? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I enjoy Melissa not giving two fucks about Teresa. Like, I felt like for so many years, she was like, pulling this whole, I just want like this family to stay together, but now that she can like unmask and sit, be like, I hate Teresa, I think that she's like much more I feel interesting. Like that, I, know, I, I, I feel like such a relief, I even know. for the viewers, yeah. I feel yeah. cause it's like, remember it's like, okay, she drew her family on their wall. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We're painting by numbers. I'm like, what? This is not, I'm from Jersey. This is not the Jersey I know. But at least she was so, trying. Like she was trying. She was really giving yes, it a go. She was, she was giving was it a go, but now she's able to give it like a housewife go where yeah. she can like let yeah, it go. Yeah, she'd be like, you know, when Teresa comes for me, I don't like in the past when Teresa would come first, she'd be like, how could you say that? I'm trying to keep this family together. But now she can just be like, you, you know? I and like I kind of feel that is a sad reality with Marge and Jackie, because mm. that was a cool reveal. I mean, that I was, was not twist. expecting that. You know, if the people at that table were not so chaotic, uh, it could have been up there with like a Monica Garcia reveal, yes. like a reality Von Teese. Yeah. But because everyone was like fighting over each other, like the reveal was still amazing. It was like, oh my goodness. But um, it wasn't quite as effective as like having a Heather Gay like build up perfect speech that mm -hmm. like ends with a big reveal like that, you know? Yeah, that's so true. What did you think of Jackie's reaction where she very strongly denied it, denied, 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 and then like all of a sudden was like, I had a dark time. Oh no, like, okay. at that, I'm not with her. That was my I, favorite. That, <laughs> Teresa, I'm not with her. I was like, <laughs> I was so. Was like, I actually, no, I, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I did meet with her. I did. I did. <laughs> If you could go inside Jackie's head for a second, why, like, why do you think she admitted so fast? She was like, I'm not going to admit this. Deny, deny, deny. Oh, wait, this might be my last episode ever. I should probably say something. Yeah. <laughs> and then when she That's walked it. out and then the producers oh. told her that the other girls were coming and she like physically backed away. I did. I felt really sad for Jackie. I like Jackie. Like, well, I'm I a actually big like, Jackie. I like, I like Jackie. Yeah. yeah. I like Jackie. I don't like it's it's like upsetting to me that she like change sides because yeah. I actually really liked her relationship with Margaret. I did love also while we were talking to him about so much Bravo stuff that he was I think he was upset he wasn't just hanging out all day here because he <laughs> almost had a Bravo celebrity run in with Stanberry and I would have loved their paths to cross. Oh my god I know I don't he he hadn't ever met Stanberry right? No. no. Okay. I, and I don't I feel like I feel I'm, I'm kind of shocked at that. I wonder if because him and Ronnie are so hysterical and like give like so many unfiltered takes. I wonder, I could see them like being like trying to like not go out of their way to meet Bravo Lebs. We didn't unpack that with him, but mm. maybe that's why he didn't see Stanberry before. I feel like they would have vibed because Stanberry so is too. the, she's the one girl who can take it. Like but, if you say something mean, nice or indifferent, like she she's ready to handle it. I was kind of worried because only a few weeks ago, me and Caroline Brooks were LOLing about a potential sugar daddy situation. She walked in so happy and so nice. She did walk in so happy and so nice, and she addressed the, the sugar daddy situation. And she obviously she wasn't happy about the sugar no. daddy situation, but she was down to talk about it she and to figure it out. She was also down to talk about projectile vomiting. Oh my god, I know. I was honestly really not expecting that because obviously, like Danny and I, like we we don't drink. We haven't. You haven't drank for a minute. Yeah. I, I just started my non-alcohol journey, and she also recently started her less alcohol journey. So <laughs> mm -hmm. we were we were asking her about that, and then. You know, I brought up the fact that it was a mixture of Ozempic and alcohol that started me on the path mm -hmm. of no more cocktails. And then she had a little fun story to share. And she was like, it was Mongero, but similar. Yeah. <laughs> she had some tea. Yeah. Not only are we watching you guys on social media, but on your podcast, you have been covering so many different topics. And a topic that me and everyone want to talk to you about, because we both don't drink, that you've cut back on your drinking, or you say you almost basically don't anymore. And when did you kind of have the realization that that was something you wanted to kind of focus in on? Um, not for any other reason than honestly, it just doesn't re react that well with me. I mean, I like to have a drink. Yeah. I just don't drink um, to the point, like I used to party like a rock star, <laughs> you know, and it, I realized at my age, it just takes me like so long to recover and I lose all those days. Mm. And then you end up, you know, chatting rubbish with people you really <laughs> don't like. And then I have the horrible hangover in the morning. And you know, your t my tummy, it's just, it's so acidic too. It just doesn't, I just don't feel good. And so, um, and I think probably watching, <laughs> watching my castmates is enough. I'm like, I don't want to appear like that. So no. They know how to party. They know how to party. We'll say that, yes. <laughs>
But you know, I'm still like, but then when I do t decide that I want to go like have a really good, you know, shot of tequila with the girls, then it really, it's really fun. You know, like in, in Bali, we went nuts. I mean, although the tequila wasn't that great, it was like girls gone wild. And that was like, honestly, um, I hadn't done that in ages because, you know, he wasn't there. Oh. So like, You're you know. because of me, honey. No, <laughs> yeah, I no, because you weren't there. Yeah. I did it, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, oh you, 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 he reigns you in? Yes. <laughs> really? Not, Not anymore. Okay. Caroline used to be the last one, always like until 7 a.m. partying like a rockstar, like crazy. And now it's just, I think our lifestyle changed a little bit. Yeah. You know? Getting ready for baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're monkeys. <laughs> I, I stopped drinking like two months ago because I was I was on Ozempic and I had like a terrible reaction with <gasps> alcohol on Ozempic. I've and had it. It's it's the worst. I it was like like it was it for vomiting? Yeah, it was disgusting. Yes. I, Me like, too. I did it in the Abbey. <gasps> Wait, Wait, that is iconic. That's a place to do it, though. No, Ozempic and of course, everyone, at the Abbey. Like, and, and they're so excited to me. see me. And I had had, w and it's nothing. You you drink half a glass. Yeah. And you're like, literally, it, it's like, and there's no way to run to it a bathroom. It was terrible. I was trying to cover her. I mean, it was just a disaster. Uh, no, that'll oh. do it. Yeah, I had a bad experience. You know, I, was I like, think that's it. If you haven't projectile vomited on Ozempic, <laughs> you haven't lived yet. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've definitely... Projectile vomited at the Abbey, like that's like oh. I could totally connect with her yeah. there. It wasn't because of Ozempic when I did; it was just because of bad choices. No, gay bars pour a lot of drinks. Yeah, it's a heavy yeah. pour. Yeah, it's rough. Can you imagine though if you went out oh. to the Abbey and you saw Caroline Stanbury projectile vomiting? What a blessing! That that's a bingo card. And then if you landed somewhere in the the pathway of the vomit and it got on you, that's like an an anointment at the Abbey, which resembles a church. Mm -hmm. Like it is. Can you? That's like holy water. Caroline Stanbury's vomit at the Abbey. From Ozempic? Oh, that is true. Holy water. That's a whole new Tamar christening. Yeah. Really? <laughs> She's they're like, I'm reborn. But yeah, of course, all the Dubai ladies were in town because they are filming the reunion this week. I know. I'm excited to see how that goes. I am too, especially because I think all of them know how to enter mad. Uh, <laughs> I think they, because what I love, and because it's why I do love Dubai housewives, because they are all such amazing housewives. They're all walking in like, I'm the only one that makes sense, and I'm going to help everybody understand. <laughs> That's so true. I think we felt <laughs> that energy with Stanberry, Sarah, and Ayan, who all came into the yeah. studio this week. Yeah, very, very much so. This season has been a rough one for Brooks, where I feel like a lot of, like, she's very busy with her business, and that's a lot of work, and a lot of people are kind of coming at her. Some of it deserves, some of it just a little o over the top, but you've always kind of been by her side. How was that? Like, because it seems like it's like yeah. a full time job to kind of like help her through some stuff and you're doing it out of love, but it seems hard. I mean, it is, yeah. because when, uh, look, if we're friends and all we're gonna do is go out for drinks and have dinner, it's not a friendship, you're an acquaintance. But mm. if you're there for your friend through thick and thin, and you don't walk away with your friends just because they have bad habits or they do wrong things, unless like it reaches a point where you can't take it. So with Brooks, of course I'm trying, because I know she went through a lot, but that does not mean, because every time Brooks does anything, people call me like, did you see what Brooks did? As if I'm her mom. It's like, Brooks is a woman. She's, she's <laughs> mature. What do I have to do with it? That's see, so Sarah, funny. look what you support. I'm, I don't support. So the thing is, with Brooks, like, I always, we have this relationship where if I mess up or if she messes up, we tell each other straightforward. And sometimes I wouldn't say it in front of camera or in front of the girls because mm. I wouldn't embarrass her like that. I don't mm. enjoy embarrassing people. Mm. It doesn't uh, feed my soul in any way. So we'd get off camera or we'd go home and I'd tell her, listen, the way you acted was too much. You need to tone it down. And she, she listens. But that doesn't mean I am okay with everything Brooks does. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not okay with everything. But am I trying? Am I trying to help her? Yes, because she's a friend. I would not walk away from a friend just because they have issues or they act weird. One of the crazy things where I feel a lot is gonna be going down between Lisa and Ayan. And I think a lot of people are gonna be, just the ladies who we've talked to, seemingly are all more so on Chanel's side. Yeah. Yeah, I think Lisa at this point, it seems like the only girl who's super in her corner is Brooks. And Ayan was saying that this friendship mm. kind of began only very recently. She gave a, she did that. She did a, a visual representation of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, uh, that, it, it was interesting to also hear her unpack her situation mm. with Lisa. She got so emotional. I wasn't, ex I was honestly, when we asked about Lisa, I was expecting her to like, Go drag off. her ass, read her for filth, but she she legitimately started crying. Like we had to get her some Kleenex. Season two of Dubai, it's it's been hot and spicy. You've been yes. at the center of a lot of drama, and these past few episodes, I mean, like 
I you know. really put through it. How are you feeling reliving all this stuff with Lisa specifically? And Stanberry, who you're close with currently, but on the show you're like kind of at her throat. Out, out of what? At her throat a little bit. Like, like, we, like, like what does that know, mean? Like, like you like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but me and somebody have that relationship. Yeah. Like, naturally. You and know what I mean? it's fun to watch. Yes. Like, <laughs> one minute I like her, one minute I'm like, oh. I love her. I was like, shove it up your ass. Yeah. And she's like, darling. And I'm like, yeah. You know, at that moment I meant that. But when it comes to Lisa, I feel like, uh, no. When it comes to her, I feel like, um, I shouldn't, honestly, I shouldn't have played the voice notes. Mm -hmm. I really regret doing that. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know it was going to be this crazy than it was you know what i mean because when i played it it was more about being like oh my god sarah finally sees the light right so but it wasn't it was still dark then you know I mean? <laughs> so, so in that way i feel bad i feel like i put lisa in a bad situation and that's why i apologized and immediately when we had lunch with stambri and talene i actually told lisa about the voice note because oh. I felt bad immediately. Yeah, I knew yeah. I was like, this is not okay. I should, I need to let her know before she knows it from anyone. And she was annoyed. She was annoyed to be honest. She was like annoyed, but seeing her reaction and not knowing about it, uh, that's what kind of like, you see me a bit crazy and I shut, shut her, close the door on her. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I feel, cause you both just had to process it and go through it, but yes. then in the morning, you guys got to a much better place, which yes. is why I'm confused that now that that good place went away. Yeah, to be honest, that was really a good moment mm -hmm. because I felt like she was really hurting and I wanted to confront her, not confront her, comfort her. And I wanted her to feel like I care about her and I love her, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, you get to see a bit of it, but that's not the reason why we are where we are. Gotcha, you know okay. What Sarah said to us? What did Sarah say? Sarah told us that mm -hmm. last season, everything you thought about Stanberry might be proved about Lisa that Lisa tries to kind of be a little bit more manipulative and controlling and all that stuff. And then you're kind of, you saw the real Lisa and you're like, I don't want more of that. Right. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, you know, listen, when you're friends, I have nine sisters, right? So when you have sisters, the, everybody has different personality and things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just be real. I mean, I know she likes to tell me what to do, how to do things and act and like, you know, like just, they, and I do the same thing too sometimes, you know, cause you're friends, yeah. you know what I mean? That's normal. I think you, you with your friends are like, oh, this is too much. This is like, you know what I mean? So I feel like w what happened at the finale, I think it's something that it's very hard for me to move on from. And that's the reason why I completely stopped the friendship. So I do hope that they are able to work something out, especially because Ion's new Ion Beauty launch kind of relates to them. The VVIP lipstick. I know. I was wondering, like, is she going to send her some VVIP I don't think she's in the doll? VVIP anymore. She's I in know. the nosebleeds. I know. That's rough. But she said that she was looking for resolution yeah. at the reunion. I feel like when we talked to Lisa weeks or months ago, she wasn't mm -mm. thinking about resolution. Mm -mm. It, it seems like she thought the end of their friendship felt pretty finite. But Ion is the one who said that she's the one who called it off. So, so she, she's she's pitting it on Lisa, Lisa. But I think Lisa has said elsewhere that it was. I mean, of course, you're not going to admit to fault in the end of a friendship. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, so I am curious to see if they are able to work all of that out. Uh, I am also very curious, of course, always to see what is continuing with the OC ladies because we have a new episode tonight, which I'm very, very excited for. I know. Especially because we have it. We even called her the confessional queen. And I think everyone, even if you're a fan of her or not, this season you have to admit Emily is bringing it. Yeah, she's been giving gold in those confessionals and kind of sparing no one in the process. Like, I think she's come for every single, even her bestie, yeah. Gina, which she said, it's, she said it's easy to make fun of Gina because she and Gina are besties, yeah. basically. But she also, I, well, we were curious, like, mm -hmm. maybe what Shannon, because she, Shannon and Emily are new friends. Like, they figured out how to be friends after having so much tension in previous seasons. And so we were wondering what, <laughs> what Shannon thought of Emily's impersonation of Archie during the DUI so, accident. So. Um, and she's, yeah, she said this. How did Shannon react to the Archie impersonation? That was, by the way, that will go down in Housewives <laughs> history. That was so screamed. good. Okay, she, I, I have seen her since then. Okay. And she did not bring it up. She didn't mention it. So I feel like it, we're good. I didn't get a text. Mm -hmm. I think maybe she just rolled with it. Okay, oh, that's good. Okay. No, we were definitely rolling with it. Like rolling yeah. on the floor laughing. It was so funny. It's <laughs> yeah. been, it's been really nice actually to see you and Gina though 
build this friendship with mm -hmm. Shannon so mm -hmm. far this season mm -hmm. because at one point y'all <laughs> were absolutely not not getting along. Right. And it's also it's kind of interesting to see like at the beginning you and Jeannie even said like oh I, I thought she should have gone to rehab, but then mm -hmm. you sat down with her, she apologized. Mm -hmm. Like what when you look back on your journey with Shannon, how mm -hmm. do you think she handled the DUI situation after the fact? I think that Shannon did everything that she could possibly do in that situation. I mean, I was there when she apologized to Gina, and we all know that she gave Gina a hard time. Yeah. She was relentless about the DUI. She brought it up all the time. She told other people about it. I feel like she, she tried to make Gina look bad, and then she got humbled. And instead of doubling down, I think she just... I, I think she just took that moment and really was vulnerable and really apologized. And you know, I've had people say, well, why would Gina accept it? Well, because Gina's a good person, mm -hmm. that's why. If you were Shannon, would you refu would you ignore it as well? Like, or would you bring it up? Would, like, I think if I was Shannon in this situation, she knows that um, there's a lot against her right now. So she's not at the point of being able to be like, and that really hurt. I think she's just like, are you on my side? Right. I think that's how she's, because, like, she is a very real and raw girl. Shan is just like, do you like me more days than you don't? All right, then you're in my corner. Right. Like, are you outwardly, are you not dating my ex? Okay, you're in my corner. Like, And she's probably picking and choosing her battles because yeah. it's better to have Emily as an ally oh, rather yeah. than fight over an Archie impersonation. Which I feel even Shannon has to admit was. Like, it was funny. I also wonder what, like, Archie thinks. Mmm. He probably appreciated it. Arch oh, my God. Archie's, Archie's getting so much screen time right now, too. So much screen time, and he's, like, received so much love since the DUI situation. Like, everyone mm -hmm. was very worried about him. And I think that, I, I know that Tamara told, <laughs> reminded Shannon that she could have hurt the dog. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think that Shannon has acknowledged that, that she's yes. so grateful that she didn't hurt Archie in the process of driving into a building. I know, I think that is, we, we have to celebrate that. Yeah. Um, so the main thing I feel that this episode of OC is gonna bring, which I'm excited to see is happening, I guess is more between Katie and Heather, which. Yeah, Katie oh. and Heather, and then I also think Katie and Gina, because oh, one yeah. thing we didn't really unpack with Emily, which I'm, I'm kind of curious to get her thoughts on, or, or I would have been curious to hear her thoughts on, is Gina's severe protection of Heather it's in a, the paparazzi yeah. situation. Why do you, why do you think that Gina's being so protective of Heather in this situation? That I honestly, I, I still, I do not understand the big deal. A Real Housewife calling the paparazzi on herself, been there, done that across the board. Oh, like it's just, it doesn't it's kind seem of actually like. If 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 it is true, Heather's lapping all of you. You yeah. know what I mean? That's the, the game. game. Totally. As Jackie that's would say, and that's, that's the, the game, game we were playing. playing. 2021. <laughs> um, I feel Gina has experience because that's what kind of what everyone was saying to about Katie with Heather. You don't want to experience the wrath of Dubro. Mm. You really want to be on her good side because she can kind of come at you in a way. And I think Gina has a lot of respect for Heather mm. and a lot of admiration and everything like that, so I think she doesn't want to rock that boat. And she's butted heads with Heather before, so she, she, she knows, knows firsthand it is way better to be on Heather's good side. So maybe she's probably upset because she seemingly gave Katie the heads up off camera, like, girl, don't bring it up, it's not worth it. Yeah. And then she brought it up. So she was probably hurt in a way, like, wow, you don't value my opinion mm -hmm. as someone who's been on this show and dealing with this person for so many years yeah. and you you went against what I told you to do and the outcome it seemed because because it was very interesting I I'm enjoying Katie I That's like same. Katie I think she's putting in the work she's bringing Sutton and Cynthia into it and she's the fact that she would even think to go against Heather I, I applaud her yeah. for that but Emily said that her receipts or possibly lack thereof they they become less and less credible as a season progresses so I don't know maybe that's why Gina was like get more than one screenshot and then she don't get on yeah well she told her she I think she said she took her to the side and she was like get your ducks in that's a row about, yeah and figure it out because this that, like it maybe it could be something if you have the proof yeah but I don't know it's kind of that weird thing I wonder what the proof could be though would it be like the text or the call log you would need that from Heather Dubrow but if from or from the friend from the friend who runs was, a paparazzi agency yes. yeah but um like Heather and Terry last week when they were in like the fur jackets with the champagne and the drink on the roof, they're kind of like mob wives energy. <laughs> like in a not in like they're just like the wealth and the fur and the, I'm like 
you know, you're not gonna. Mess, I'm, I'm not betting outside the family. Like I'm not. Yeah. Trying, yeah no. 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 Don't want to mess with that. I just no. want my glass of champagne on the rooftop. Uh, and, with although her, I don't drink, but yeah. But you know, you throw <laughs> up at the Abbey. I for would. Heather. Yeah. Oh, I would throw up at the Abbey. <laughs> oh my god, I don't eat fish. I don't eat. I eat caviar with her. I don't even. Heather Dubrow could tell me anything, and I'd say thank you. One hundred percent. Yeah.